All right. Well, welcome everyone to our first uh, virtual workshop of the semester for fall 2021 for the College of Engineering. My name is Marian Mason. I'm the Director of Engineering Career Services. We're delighted to have you today. We have a very, very interesting and specific topic that Credit One Bank is going to be presenting to us today. So I'd like to introduce their folks first and then they will take it away and they will probably ask you to come up with some questions because this is for you as as you know so let's begin we've got noel garcia who is a campus program partner at credit one bank she's been there since march of 2021 she actually used to work for unlv in career services and we're really glad to see noel again she started the internship program at credit one bank and that's a big job we've also got alicia lamott who's also a campus program partner at credit one bank she started there i believe in july of 2021 and has served eight years in higher ed i think noel you've been in higher ed seven years so you guys are like neck and neck with having been in higher ed and last but certainly not least is one of our own caleb johnson baugh is a recent unlv computer science graduate he's here because he had an internship with credit one last summer and he's going to talk about his internship experience and also his current position and as Carmen requested a few moments ago, we're going to find out about what the heck is Agile Workflow. I'm dying to know what this is, too. So without further ado, who, who takes the ball and runs with it at this point? All three of you or Noelle, you're going to kick us off. No, it's actually Alicia's going to Alicia. kick us off and I am going to be observing. Great. <laughs> Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you all here with us today. Um, as Marion said, please, if you have questions throughout the day, please put those in the chat. We will be um, trying to monitor that. I did want to just briefly go over um, our agenda for the day. So we are actually going to do a brief introduction of who we are here at Credit One Bank. Um, and what we focus on. We're then going to also just give you a little bit of information about our college programs in the event that any of you might actually be interested in joining us um, here at Credit One Bank for one of our college programs. And then from there, we will turn it, the rest of the presentation over to Caleb to talk to you about that agile workflow and how he is, um, he learned about it at UNLV and also how he is using it here um, at Credit One Bank. So I'm going to go ahead and share our screen and we are going to get started. Okay. So Credit One Bank is actually um, a technology and data driven financial services company. We're based right here in Las Vegas. Um, we actually presented for the FMA club last night and one of the students was like, you're off of the 215. And we were like, yes, that's exactly where we are. So we are located off of the 215 near Buffalo. Um, we are a leader in the credit card industry. We offer a full spectrum of credit card products to our customers. Just last month, we hit over 14 million customers that we are currently serving. Our niche market that we have found success in and that our, the foundation of our company is built on is actually subprime lending. So we really focus on credit cards. While we are a bank, you're not going to see multiple credit on bank locations um, throughout the nation. Our headquarters is where we do most of our work from. And that truly is because we are in that niche market of subprime lending. So just very briefly, I wanted to let you know that one of the focuses here at Credit One Bank is our corporate, corporate partnerships. We have partnerships with a lot of local sports organizations, um, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Raiders, as well as the Las Vegas Aviators, the minor league baseball team in Summerlin. We also, as an organization, really like to give back to the community. Um, and then also here at Credit One Bank, there's a lot of room for growth. We recently built a second building here at our headquarters, and we need to fill that building. And so we want young, energetic talent that's eager to help us move our company forward. So. Um, why work for Credit One Bank? You can see here we offer traditional benefits at Credit One Bank. 
But I also wanted just to let you all know that one of the main benefits of working for Credit One Bank, if you were to go into the college programs that we're about to speak about um, briefly, is actually leadership training um, and the ability to network with our leadership. So Caleb's actually going to talk to you today about agile workflow and how that is like a project management. Um, and so you would get training just like that through our college programs. And then we also offer a tuition reimbursement for any of our full-time employees that have been with us for six months or more. So if you join Credit One Bank wanting to go back and continue your education, we do offer tuition reimbursement. So just very briefly, I want to at least highlight our college programs in the event that any of you were interested in joining us. We do have an internship program. We will be hosting 33 interns the next summer in the summer of 2022 from June 20th through August 12th. That'll be here at our Las Vegas headquarters. Those internships that eight weeks will be in the following areas, marketing, IT, risk management, treasury and finance, and many more. Um, so if you are interested or looking for an internship, if you're a junior or a senior with at least one semester remaining, we would love to have you apply and join us here at Credit One Bank next summer. We are currently recruiting for this internship and we hope to make offers in November so that our interns for next summer will actually know that they've secured an internship before they get to go on their Thanksgiving break. So if you're interested, those applications are in Handshake. We also have two programs for anyone that may be graduating. Again, these are in Handshake. I'm just very briefly gonna to touch on them. So we have Credit Risk Management Program. This is for anyone looking for an opportunity that may have a degree in finance, economic data science. So if you're graduating in May, or next summer, then um, this is a one year full time program actually in our credit risk department where you would learn more about acquisitions, portfolio, and customer engagement within our credit risk disciplines. And then we do have one. So, I, as Marion said earlier, I believe most of you here with us today are actually computer science majors. So, this one may be of more interest to you. This is our information management leadership program. This is a two year full time rotational program within our IT department. You would rotate eight months in our development, infrastructure, and project management departments. This would begin in July of 2022 and go through July of 2024. It's an amazing way if you know you want to go into the field of IT, but you're not sure exactly what area you want to get a job in. This is a great way to explore all of those areas to find your passion. Um, and then our hope is, is that you would continue on with Credit One Bank in a full time capacity. And then lastly, if any of you are interested in going on for your master's or you have your master's, we do have a program called the Management Associate Program. It is for students that have received their master's, have two to five years of um, experience, and it is actually a two-year rotational program within four of our main areas here at the bank, IT, marketing, risk management, treasury, and finance. And the goal of this program is that individuals would actually come out and be prepared to be leaders here at Credit One Bank um, and be able to work and grow here at the company. Alicia, I see on your slide that it says computer science and computer engineering. Yes, we, yes. Um, that is correct for both the I, um, the IMLP program and the MAP program. We would welcome um, either of those majors. So, yes, absolutely. And again, um, I know I've already said this, but I want to just reiterate the only place to apply for the programs that I've just highlighted is through Handshake. All of our applications for these specific college programs are through Handshake because they are geared towards students. We want you to succeed students that are just graduating or that may still be students. We want you to succeed through these programs here at Credit One Bank. And so you can apply to those through Handshake. 
If anybody is interested in seeing any of the other jobs that we may have available that are just full time positions outside of our college programs department, you can visit creditonecareers.com. Here on the right hand side of your screen are actually some of those current openings that we would encourage you to explore. If you're coming out with your bachelor's degree, you would want to look at some of those titles that just for example, like for all risk network analyst or risk analyst one, so that don't have a number after or have a one after the title. Those are our entry level positions. If you're coming out with a master's degree, then you may want to look at some of those risk analyst two positions that are there um, because they may be more suitable for your skill level. We do encourage you to look at the posting. The posting will tell you exactly what they're looking for in terms of education as well as certification. Can I ask a quick question about that? I've, we've all seen those ones and twos after certain titles across the board with different industry. Is that typically the case with all industries that the one means entry level and the two is a master's level? I would say that in um, not necessarily entry and master's level, but definitely growth within the responsibilities of the position. Okay. So certainly um, if we're a level two or if for us, we have level one, two, and three, um, your skill set and your ability does increase um, with the, as the numbers go up. I'm going to chime in too. So, um, yes, that is very typical as well as, um, the years of experience, um, is usually also what the numbers are. Somebody that would have a, a, a 3 after their name should have anywhere from 5 to 8 years of experience within the field. Um, so that's why usually anything with, and these are just some sample ones, anything with just the name. So if we looked at that IT 1 that's listed there, and if it was a, just a developer. That would probably be the most entry level. And then we're saying, if you look at 1 with that says developer 1, that still might be entry level and only ask for maybe a year or so of experience. So to really read the postings, um, because they are slightly different, I could tell you right now that our IT and risk are a little bit different in terms of years of experience based on a level 1 and a 2. So that's why we're, we're really highlighting to read the position descriptions. I really appreciate you saying that because I don't think a lot of people explain that. Very well in either their job description or when they do events like this. And I think there's a little bit of confusion around that. So thanks for answering that. Absolutely. So the last slide that I will actually be speaking on, and then we'll really dive into our topic of agile workflow today with Caleb is we would actually love for any of you to join us. So if you enjoy what you're hearing today, you want to learn even more about the programs that I just spoke about and actually get an amazing opportunity to hear from some of our executive level leadership. So we will actually have some of our AVPs um, from different departments here within Credit One Bank joining us at Brunch and Banking. This is on Thursday, September 23rd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits Lab in Hospitality Hall. We will be serving brunch, um, so we are asking that students please um, register through Handshake, and then we will send you a follow-up email with some additional information that we need from you. But if Credit One Bank sounds like a place that you would like to learn more about, or if you're just interested in hearing from corporate leadership and how they got to where they are and what they're doing in the corporate world, this is a great opportunity for you to come out and learn a little bit more. So I am going to just pause briefly and make sure, does anybody have any questions about any of the information I've shared thus far about Credit One Bank, the college programs, or the event that we will be hosting? And folks, you can either put the question in the chat or just unmute. And that's okay. We, it, it may take you some time. You may be thinking about those questions. If you do have them and it comes to you while Caleb's talking, please feel free to jot those down or put them in the chat. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it over to Caleb and Caleb's going to talk to us more about agile workflows. Hi guys. So my name is Caleb. 
Um, just a little bit more about myself. There we go. Oh, too far. So a little bit more about myself. Uh, my name is Caleb. Um, I am currently a front end web engineer here at Credit One Bank. Um, as they say that I started in their internship program um, back in June and then uh, secured the position of front end web engineer, actually doing the same work I was as intern. Um, the cool thing is the stuff I was doing as an intern was stuff that the company was going to be using and continuing to use. So they aren't just having to play around forever. They're actually having to do real work here at, during the internship. Um, also just graduated, you know, we this um, August <laughs> actually. So I've been barely graduated for a month now. Um, but previous to that, um, the only real work experience that I had was at um, working at Best Buy and sign spinning. Um, I didn't have any like formal experience in terms of like coding and uh, corporation or anything like that. It was just mainly personal projects contributing to open source projects that I have. And that's kind of the cool thing about it for the computer science students is that you can show um, what you're worth uh, without actually having like that experience on paper for it. In fact, my boss, who is brilliant, he's very smart. He doesn't have a bachelor's degree and he's in the front end web engineer three position and is actually doing project management and breaking up all this stuff. Um, so before I get too much into that, I just want to mention uh, that it's not just for uh, one, we don't just do like coding. We also have infrastructure, database systems um, that is part of the internship program. Uh, if you want to do IT, uh, they have a bunch of different options for it. So those three courses I listed are very vital and real work experience for it. Um, especially the last one, Force New Tube Software Product Design. Uh, when I took it, it was with uh, Stefik, um, who did actually teach about Agile. You'll probably learn more about it there too, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview today. So, go. Is this not cooperative? Oh, and it's loading. All right, it looks like I have some technical difficulties. There we go. So, Agile. Kind of seems like a little bit of buzzword to some people, especially around here at the bank when it first came around. Um, but essentially, it's a set of principles that help guide decisions um, for projects. For most other companies, uh, they have different decision making ones and they can get different flavors of agile. Um, but agile itself is just kind of a general overview of how to break um, projects down to smaller tasks. You do an iterative approach. So instead of just going head on into a project and seeing what comes out at the end, you start off very small and work bigger. So if you're trying to make a uh, mode of transportation, you might start off with something very simple like a skateboard just to get people moving. And that's like your minimum viable products that you have that you can show them like, hey, this actually is a concept that can work. And from that, you can build onto it. Uh, maybe you want to add a handlebar to control where you go or how fast you want to go, you want to add pedals. So and it keeps building up further and further until you reach something that is the completed project for it. And it really cool thing about doing that iterative approach is it lets you respond to change and be able to uh, take advantage of any changes that may happen from when the project started to where you are right now for it. Um, just a real quick, just to show a little bit of kind of overview of Agile, this is just a quick video I want to show you guys. That's fine. Same. Oh man. Okay. I don't know if you can hear, but um the video that I was going to show is for Agile with regard to uh, non-tech situations. So with you hear Agile, typically most people think that it's IT people or programmers only using it, um, but it's really a uh, decision-making device that you can uh, use in just day-to-day -day life or even just managing you know, project people and everything for it, essentially. So, going too fast. There we go. I had y'all uh, how we actually use the here in the bank can differ between a uh, team team. Like I was saying earlier, uh, we had just transitioned from waterfall. In fact, when I got here, some teams were still waterfall. Uh, my team was one of the first few ones that was completely agile. Um, and 
it did take a lot of growing pains as we do have to work with other teams who were not completely transitioned to agile yet and they were still in the waterfall mindset in which case it definitely has some growing pains for sure and for those of you who don't know um waterfall is a little bit older methodology where you put everything together a nice little package say this is what i want this is how it's going to look like it's going to be this color this size all that and you send that document to whoever's going to make your project and they make it to that spec which can be good or a bad thing um for one there's always a paper trail you see what's happening for it but it's a bad thing in the sense that a lot of projects will typically start and take much longer than you think to accomplish and a lot of things can change in the market in life and how even you perceive something uh, from when we start that project to the end and the cool thing about agile is it lets you kind of take that every approach so back to that skateboard example you show them hey is this kind of what you're looking for and they go, like, eh, no, I'm, I don't like that color, or that's not what I was thinking. And unless you respond to that change right away, instead of waiting until you're at the very end of the project, and they're like, this is not what I wanted at all. And it's bad for both the business and for the people making it. As business, they get something you don't like, the people making it, they made something that they're probably not going to use, wasted effort. Um, and it's just a little bit, I don't want to talk to completely bad about waterfall it still has some advantages for some teams in fact there is some teams here that are still on waterfall because they really can't switch to agile and it's really for short spurts where you know exactly what you want to do and how to accomplish it um but a lot of our teams have been switching over to agile not just with it but our marketing and risk have been uh, running with agile pretty well especially our marketing team with the agile methodology lets them to respond and capitalize on trends in the market quickly. And it's not even that they couldn't do before, it's just that now they have the systems are in place so that they can respond to those change much quicker and like I said, capitalize on it. So if you're responding to change, but that change happened a month ago, it, you're not gonna be able to capitalize on it that well. Um, and then our risk team, they, they use a little bit more free flow agile where they're not necessarily um, going through these sprints and um, breaking down. They break down the projects and kind of slowly take parts of it to try to make models and reports and put everything together for it. Um, and that here at Credit One Bank, we don't lock a team into working a certain way with Agile. So, so you'll see sometimes someone says, oh, you have to do it this way or it's not Agile, but Agile, I think that's kind of a, what's the word, a kind of hip critic to say that um, as it's a very free flow methodology. So typically um, there's two main, um, what's the uh, workflows that you can uh, use with Agile. So Scrum and Common, which are just two different ways to break up a project. So with Scrum, you typically have uh, usually two to three week sprints where you're trying to accomplish work and get stuff done in a certain time frame, which is really uh, helpful for uh, software design as a lot of times you have deadlines to meet and you have to be able to cut off if a feature is not going to go to make it to that project. And so be able to time frame everything and see how it works out um, lets you figure out your capacity after a while and you can just uh, break down each of the projects into smaller stories and break those into points. And those points, you don't put like one, two, three, you usually put like sizes, like it's a small t-shirt or a medium t-shirt or a large t-shirt to kind of break down your work. So like a small t-shirt will take you less than a day, a medium will take you usually a couple days, and then a large one will take you a week for it. And as you continue to um, work with those points, you can start to visualize how much your team capacity is. So if you know that this guy can take two large t-shirts and this one can take three mediums, you can just look at all of your stories, see how many points you have, and just assign it for a spring. And you know, and you're pretty darn confident that you can get that amount of work done in that amount of time. Um, whereas common is a little bit more of a continuous workflow. So you still will typically break down projects into smaller um, bits, but you typically um, break it up in of how it, far it is into a project. So usually start off with the 
uh, concept, the design, and then it goes to um, usually actually research and then uh, development and then testing and so on and so forth for it. And it's more so like said, you have to pull things from different sides, a little bit less linear approach. And at Creative One Bank, we let the teams decide how they will approach their projects for it. We don't lock them into uh, one system, but we do typically want to keep track of work. We want to have accountability and be able to know what changes are made for it, especially if with this rapid changing uh, methodology that we're using, we actually have to keep track of it. So we at least um, encourage the people to use Jira boards, which are essentially a Kanban board, but it can be used most ground or Kanban. And it keeps accountability as it's a website basically that you can break down your uh, project into smaller stories. You can tell the person what they're supposed to do. And there's a lot of cool features. You can type in questions um, to say, hey, do you mean it should do this? And they can respond, oh, I mean, it should do that. And it helps you work with different people in the business, like even talking to them in person, be able to get that information super quickly and respond to a change, even in like a matter of minutes for it. And if they didn't like that change, you can say, hey, look, you said to do it right here, for example. So it helps keep accountability, and it tracks change, and it's a lot better than emails, the way a lot of people do before, because they would send emails back and forth while they design a document to put everything together with. And sometimes things will fall through the cracks or not get completed. Um, typically with like a uh, board like this, you are tracking where it is. If it gets um, too far north, it'll usually pop up to the top like, hey, you look at me. And it really keeps the workflow continuous and tracking everything that way. And so that's all cool on the higher level, but how did I actually use it during this time frame? Um, so a little more about just the project, I can't go too far into it, but um, my team is tasked with upgrading a bunch of older systems at the bank that we've been using for a really long time. One of the systems is with their old name. Um, it's that old, it's like over 20 years old. So we're making newer systems to, um, and we're creating basically web apps uh, to serve internally, as we do have internal servers, which if you're interested in networking, um, there is internship positions that cover that stuff for networking. Um, but we're upgrading our own stuff and creating databases and um, making websites to uh, change anything. And so, like I said, when I first got here, we were agile, I mean, a waterfall uh, company, and we were handed a document that was designed in that waterfall methodology. And I can't tell you how much of a headache it was working through that thing and trying to figure out what they're talking about. Because not only is there so many hands changing and doing different things to that document, but they've made changes that were from two years ago that were like, we don't even have the system anymore. How are we supposed to do that? And it was a very big headache for sure. So not only that, but it was such a big document that not one person figured out by themselves. So we were, had to take the document and basically make it an agile document, sort it down into smaller stories and figure out what exactly they wanted and put it all together. And one of the difficulties we had transitioning um, as a new team is that we did not know how much we could even do. Like how much can we accomplish in this time frame for it? And so what we do is usually before we start working for a sprint, we'll look at the stories we have, what they're supposed to cover, and we all kind of vote like, yo, I, I think that's gonna take like probably three days, that's probably gonna take a week. Um, and it's kind of interesting as different people have different abilities. So one person will say, yeah, this is going to take a week. There's no way. And one person, they may know a trick that it gets done in like five minutes for it. And so being able to have those meetings come together still and talk about how the project is as a whole uh, really helps with keeping everything focused for it. Um, and with the, after everything was said and done for the project, we had a minimum viable product, our MVP, um, and it was pretty much to the spec that they had pointed out originally. And we demoed it and they hated it. <laughs> and we are like, yeah, so how to improve it? We uh, talked to them for a while. And before that, we had a hard time getting in contact with them. They were one of the teams that were still waterfall and uh, we, 
had to show them why that we made super quickly. That was basically to that spec that they wanted. And then kind of clicked for them at that point, like, wow, this really is not what we want. And once we showed them our second product, they were like, wow, this is a lot better for it. So it's definitely a huge benefit in terms of companies for sure, especially as a um, virtual bank. And we are continuously updating and trying to stay with the trends. So it has been huge help for us for sure. And I'm still using that right now um, for it. We are still working on the same projects um, and it has, like I said, evolved. We are changing everything, every sprint that we have, we're getting better and better, figuring out how much we can actually do and be able to say, this will be done by this point for it. So it helps keep accountability. It helps keep the flow, everything for that. Um, and I think that was about it. all I have for you guys at the moment. Um, I think I saw one of the questions pop up and I that. Let's see that. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and um, see if we can stop sharing our screen. Um, so before I stop sharing, I do want to just let you all know, um, again, if you're interested in any of those positions that we talked about earlier, you would apply through Handshake. Um, and here is actually mine and Noel's um, LinkedIn information. So if you're interested in connecting with us so that you can ask questions, um, we would love to connect with you. Um, so I am going to go ahead and stop sharing just so that we can see everybody. Um, okay, so Okay. Yeah, so um, with the IT internship, uh, they just post it as an IT internship to keep it general. Um, but I'm new, I was, I came in specifically for software engineering. That's what I want to do. Um, then, like, there was another guy, Neil, who uh, did networking. Um, There's supposed to be a, another position for some data uh, system management that I think fell through. Um, just person, not the position. Um, and then there was, uh, there's also, if you are interested in like data science stuff, uh, I know that there is some data science related um, positions. Yeah, and I'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit more. So one of the, the posting that for next summer that you would actually be interested in looking for for our IT internship is um, called our full stack developer intern. That's what um, the IT department decided to call it for next year. Um, and so that will be our IT specific internship that we will be hosting in summer of 2022. I do wanna encourage you though, um, there's others that if you are still really interested, like if you're interested in other areas of IT, um, actually our marketing department has a, like a web developer um, one intern or a web engineer one intern. Um, so still a lot of like the coding and the sequencing and whatnot, but it's specifically working with our um, website and helping um, everything flow and whatnot. So it is under our marketing department. So I would encourage you that if you're um, interested in doing something with computer science or computers during your internship here, um, again, we have 33 internships for next summer and we did have multiple postings for those internships so that you could specifically see what would be the responsibilities for each one. So I encourage you to look at all of the ones that we have posting um, because it may be that the IT one is a good fit for you and you'll apply to that one, but you may see another one in marketing that is very computer science and um, heavy and that you could get a lot of great experience there too. And you can apply to more than one internship if you're interested and feel that you're well qualified. Ernesto, in terms of our internships, our internships are paid internships, um, and that's the position that you are asking about. Um, our internships pay $18 an hour for our um, initial internship.
Jesse. Well, I'm just going to say that's an incredible starting salary. <laughs> I think that's very good. Um, and, and they do not clearly have to have prior experience with Agile. You're going to train them on all of that. Yeah, we actually have um, our whole company trained on Agile. Uh, we have systems in place uh, to teach you how to use it. And a lot of it is sometimes just doing it, seeing how uh, the projects work for it. And like I was describing, it's not a set in stone way to do it. My team specifically is really close to the scrum methodology where we have uh, continuous meetings to make sure we're staying focused. But that's because we are on a big project that is brand new and has a lot of moving parts for it. Where other teams, much smaller, they just kind of do um, the boards to keep track of everything. But uh, we do have our uh, in-house training systems with a uh, breakdown of it all. If you just want to actually learn about it, that's how I learned some of the points here today before this. Thank you. So any other questions, students, attendees? Now is the time to ask. Uh, it sounds like this is the wave of the future for just about any industry. I mean, do you see other industries also implementing this type of project management? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, the video as not show, it was uh, about how even churches can use it for just their day-to-day -day business for it. Um, and it's really, especially with the way the world's changing constantly, it's almost impossible to do a very uh, focused method like waterfall. You have to really know what you're doing. You have to really know that it's not going to change by the time you're finished and be able to do that. So most industries I definitely see are switching to this for sure. Yeah, sounds like it's fascinating. Students, no more questions. Noel, Alicia, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, just if you're interested, please apply in handshake and add to reiterate what Alicia said, really look at the, the positions. We have 33 internships, um, so please read them carefully because you might be interested in them. Um, apply to as many that interest you. Um, these are all uh, internships that are supervised by somebody different. Um, so they they literally had to request an intern and give me um, the job description that they, they have, and that's what you're looking at. Um, the other thing I want to say is also, if you are graduating either December or May of uh, December of 2021, this December or May of 2022, that IMLP program is a great opportunity also uh, in terms of getting that leadership development that you would want within our IT department. Alicia, do you have anything to add? And thank you, Caleb. Yeah, of course. I would just elaborate on that. Um, we, in talking last night with um, the FMA members, um, I think one thing that I would add specifically about the internships and the IMLP, the college programs that we offer, um, I just want to reiterate that ability. You're coming in with a cohort, so you're not going to be coming in and trying to figure this out on your own. Um, and Caleb might actually be able to speak a little bit more to this than I am. But specifically for our internship program, like well, at least once a week, you will come together with your cohort. Um, with those other 33 members, again, we'll offer leadership training. You'll have exercises where you'll be able to like write out ideas. We'll give you prompts and you'll kind of work through how would this work here at Credit One Bank. Um, so it's not only a great way to get hands on work experience and truly build your resume, but also just a great way that if you've not had any exposure to the corporate work field um, to, to kind of get your feet wet and to give it a try. Um, Noelle and I will be there to help guide you through that experience as well. And if you're, you know, needing to have a conversation with a coworker or, you know, if there's a project and you're feeling overwhelmed and you're just not sure how to approach those things. One of the great things about the college programs is that we are also there as a resource to help guide you through even those types of conversations and how to have them. So that's another great benefit to coming in through a program like that. Just to add to that, um, definitely having the cohort meetings once a week was a great way to ease into, like you said, that corporate uh, life for it. 
as there's a lot of moving parts in the company and be able to talk with the other interns and what they're doing and they're experiencing has been humongous help for me. Uh, be able to see how everyone works together. I don't think I've been able to secure the position without having that ability to talk to everyone and see how everything is to actually add value to the company for it. And like <laughs> they were saying, Alicia and Noel have been amazing help. They have they were there every step of the way. They've been awesome, and I can't say that enough for sure. Thanks again, guys. It's great. You, Caleb, so, we were excited to bring you on board. <laughs> and and did you guys find each other at the networking mixer that we had? Yeah, last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. like... Awesome. That's terrific. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, you have an amazing program. I, I am so impressed. I have not seen any other bank present. I, well, I haven't seen any other bank present anything anywhere close to what you all are doing with the leadership program and all of that. Um, it's amazing. I applaud you. I think it's a grand opportunity for our students uh, to get some terrific experience on something that's extremely um, valuable in today's workplace. So we thank you so much for sharing this information with us and with our students. Students, one last shot. Any other questions? This is your chance. Not seeing any. So, okay, with that, I think we will thank Caleb. Yes. Thank you. And congratulations for, for kicking off the internship program there at Credit One, Noel for starting it, and Alicia for implementing it. We're really glad to meet you all. Thank you, students, for joining us today. Apply, 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 apply. That's why we do these info sessions so you learn about these companies who are looking for you. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.